Once upon a time, there was a king and queen who had three sons. One day, the king called his three sons to him and said, I'm getting old. One of these days, I will no longer be able to be a king. And I will give my kingdom to the first one of you who rescues a woman from mortal danger. You can see he was a rather traditional kind of king. And he said to the oldest, because you are the oldest, I will give you the first opportunity. And so the prince donned his finest raiment, put a bejeweled saddle on his horse, and could hardly wait to get started on his adventure. He rode out from the palace. After a while he came to a wooded area, went into the woods. And as he rode along, he met an old woman standing by the side of the path <clears throat> with a fidgety goat. And the old woman said to him, O oh, Prince, and she recognized him as a prince, of course, because, well, he looked like a prince. Oh, prince, she said, would you please milk my goat? I can no longer milk her. Well, the prince pulled him up, himself up to his full princely height and said, well, I'm a prince. I don't know anything about milking goats. And he rode on. After a while, he came to a young woman standing by the path holding a crying baby. And the young woman said, Oh, Prince, would you please help me feed my baby? I, I can no longer feed him. Well, the Prince said, uh, I don't. I'm a prince, and I don't know anything about feeding babies, and rode on. And after a while, he came to an old man, also standing close to the path, holding a, an axe. And the old man said, O oh, prince, if you will, sir, would you please take my axe and cut wood for the king? I am his woodcutter, but I'm getting old and I can no longer hold the axe. Well, the prince said, I would serve your king, but not as a woodcutter. I'm here to seek my fame and fortune to rescue a princess, no less, from a fiery dragon and become a king in my own right. And so he rode on, came to a castle, met and pledged himself in service to the king, and in fact did become a knight, a famous knight. He fought many battles throughout the kingdom saved the kingdom from enemies more than once, killed many of the enemy. But as time went on, he never met a princess who needed saving from a fiery dragon. As time went on, and he had not fulfilled his mission, his father, the king, called the middle son to him and said, it is your time to make the effort. And so the middle son, realizing what had happened to his older brother, thought to ask his father for advice. And his father said, just remember, there's more to being a king than just fighting battles. The middle son thought about that as he readied himself for the trip. 
mounted his horse, rode off, came to the woods, and in the woods he met some of the same people that his older brother had met. The old woman with the goat, the young woman with the baby, and the old man with the axe. But essentially he gave them the same answers his brother had given him and rode on until he came to the castle. There he met the king and pledged himself in service, but not as a knight, as a courtesan. And he served him well. He learned the art of diplomacy. He learned how to work, work with people in the kingdom and also with the allies of the kingdom. He became quite famous. And unlike his brother, he did meet princesses, a lot of them. But unfortunately, none of them needed to be saving from a fiery dragon or for anything as far as that was concerned. And so while he lived a comfortable existence, he had not fulfilled his father's command. Time passed. The king called his youngest son to him and said, it is time for you to do what your brothers have failed to do. And the youngest thought not only to ask his father's advice, but he thought to ask his mother's advice as well. And she said to him, your father is right. There's more to being a king than fighting battles or being a good politician. Remember as you take your journey, always look within your heart and do what you think is right. And with that advice, the youngest reluctantly saddled his horse and rode out of the castle. I say reluctantly because he really didn't want to leave home. In fact, he dismounted and walked through the fields around the castle for a while, listening to the birds, reflecting on the home that he had grown up in. And then with a sigh, he climbed back on his horse and rode until he came to the woods. Now, as he came into the woods, he met the old woman with the fidgety goat. And she said to him, Prince, would you please help me feed my goat? I can no longer feed her. The young prince said, you know, I was raised as a prince and I don't know much about goats or milking them. But I suppose if you would show me how, I could do that. And so with the old woman's help, he dismounted and with her help, he milked the goat. And sure enough, came up with a bucket of warm, foamy milk. Pleased with himself, the old woman said, O oh, Prince, now that you can milk the goat, you can have her. The young prince said, wait, wait a minute. I'm glad I was able to help and I enjoyed being able to do this, but, but he might as well have been talking to the wind. The old woman had disappeared. And the young prince was left with the goat. He took the rope that was attached to the goat's uh, harness collar and said, well, I don't know what else to do. Tied the other end to the 
saddle horn and rode off through the woods. After a while he came to the young woman standing by the path holding her crying baby. And she said, Oh Prince, would you help me please feed my baby? I can no longer feed him. The young prince said, This is not turning out the way I thought it would. I am a prince and I know nothing about taking care of babies. But, he said, remembering what his mother had said, I, I do have this goat and I have learned how to milk her and I suppose with your help then we can feed the baby. So he dismounted and began to milk the goat. Pretty soon he had a bucket of warm foamy milk and with the young woman's help was able to feed the baby. And the baby got crying and started cooing. And the young woman said, now you must burp him. <laughs> the prince said, I, I beg your pardon, burp him? I, I, I don't know what to do. And so she laid a cloth on the prince's shoulder so as not to stain his princely garb and with her help he learned to pat the baby on the back and to burp him. He was feeling pleased with himself and the young woman said, Prince, now that you have learned how to feed the baby, you may have him. Wait a minute, the prince said. This really isn't turning out the way it's supposed to. I'm glad I was able to help, but I don't know anything about taking care of. But he might as well have been talking to the wind. The young woman had disappeared. And he was left with the baby. The young prince said, Hmm. Well, got back on his horse, holding the baby in his arms, with the goat tagging along behind, rode on. He came at last to the old man with the axe. And the old man said, Prince, would you please take my axe and cut wood for the king? I am the king's woodcutter, but I can no longer hold the axe. And the young prince said, I really don't think this is the way things were supposed to happen, uh, but remembering his mother's advice. He looked into his heart and said, I've got the goat, I've got the baby, and I suppose I do need to have a way to take care of him. So I will help you. So he got down off his horse and he and the old man began to cut wood for the king. In the meantime, they took care of the, the baby who was growing into a little boy. But even though he was happy doing what he was doing, he realized that his father was counting on him to save a, more, a woman from mortal danger. And he had no opportunity. The only women around in the woods were farm girls and they were pretty uh, 
capable of defending themselves and there was nothing to attack, no d dragons, nothing to attack them except an occasional wolf and they could pretty well handle that themselves. And he never got a chance to meet anybody else because while he would cut the wood, the old man who could still drive the cart would deliver it to the king. It was a good life. But on occasion, the young prince would think how disappointed his father would be. One day, when he was in a particularly pensive mood, and the young baby, now a, a little boy, came running to him and jumped up in his lap and said, you want to hear something funny? Well, the prince said, oh, yeah, okay. Actually wasn't listening to him, staring off into that middle distance, thinking about how he had more than likely disappointed his father. And he said, yeah, uh, okay. And the little boy said, you know that little girl that lives down the lane? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the funny thing, her mother has made her a red cape and a red cloak uh, and hood. And all the kids are calling her Little Red Riding Hood. And the prince said, yeah, yeah. He set the little boy down on the ground and said, Now you run along and play. I've got things to think about. And finally, in a few moments, he stood up, took the axe, put it over his shoulder, and walked slowly down the path that left the cottage. And as he walks along the path and comes to a curve, we see the sun glancing off of the axe. And it's almost like the sun is winking to us. And that's the last we see of the young prince, the woodcutter, as he leaves this story and goes into another one. Thank you for listening.